Come on, marker. Okay, so if you can tell me about settling up and the planters taking it all and how mm -hmm. that made you feel and... Mm -hmm. Okay. Start off? Yep. Oh, when I was a child, we lived on a plantation in Arkansas. And it was a sharecropper. And the way it's supposed to be, the landlord got half the profit and the sharecroppers got half. But we'd never get half. We'd always get a small amount of money and the rest went to the planter. And so, can you tell me about that it didn't matter if you went from place yes. to place, it would be the yes. same thing, and that there was no yes. hope in that, and that's why you joined the union. And my dad always moved every year, trying to find a better plantation, but they all were practically the same. And what I was going to say now. Um, okay, can you say that again, that, that it wasn't different from place to place? Yes. And that it meant that, that he had no hope, and that that's why he joined the union. Yes. So it wasn't we would move from plantation to plantation, and it wasn't any hope because all of them were the same. You'd get a small amount of money after working a year on any of them. Therefore, they joined the union thinking that the, they would get better qualification of, you know, more money from the crops. How'd you feel about uh, your daddy being in the union? Well... I didn't like it because I didn't want to get thrown out. I didn't want to, you know, be outdoors. But he decided that that was the best, and that's what he did. And they stayed there. Did you have another kid that was that okay. uh, My dad was Cleveland Clayton. And we lived on Mr. C.H. Dipple's plantation at Earl, Arkansas. And that's where the union started. And the lawyer told him not to move out. Mr. Dibble asked him to move at a certain time, and they didn't. So about mid-January, he came with the wagons and the sheriff and moved 16 families on the roadside. Okay, we're out. We're just gonna switch films, okay. Uh, Two marker. Say, so will you tell me about why you were afraid mm -hmm. of your daddy being in the mm -hmm. union and start off by saying, I was afraid for my daddy or something? Okay. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was afraid for my dad to be in the union. First, I was afraid he'd get killed because the planters didn't allow you to have the union. And he had the only transportation to bring the men to Memphis to the lawyer's office. And that's why I was so afraid for him. Now, they had these meetings in secret. Can yes, they had the meetings in secret. They'd have them at night from house to house, you know different places. And when Mr. Dibble found out about it, that's when he gave them news that they had to move or drop the union. And they didn't want to do that. The lawyer told them to stay there until he moved them out, and that's what they did. Can you tell me about that day when the wagons pulled up to you? Yes, house? it was about mid-January. And the wagons came early in the morning and started moving everybody and loading furniture on the wagon until they get it full, mixing it all together. And it took practically all day to move all of them away and put them on the roadside. And that's where they stayed until they got another place to move. Okay. Can you tell me that again? Can you tell me that whole thing about when the mag wagons pulled up to your place? Yes. And, um, put stuff on, went from house to house until they got a wagon load, mm -hmm. how they dumped it all off on the side of the road, mm -hmm. how you had to pick through. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you're going to have to just wait a little while until after Susan finishes talking before you begin. Yes, I okay. noticed that. <laughs> I okay. noticed that I was saying that. I'm ready now, though. Mm -hmm. Okay. When the wagons came on a date that he had given them to move, they start at one house and they keep going from house to house until they get a wagon load. Then they'd carry it, and dump it out on the road, and come back and get another load. And it took practically all day to move us out there. We were out there. We got finished about first dark. 
and everybody's furniture was together, piled like a dump truck with piled gravel or something. And you had to ramble through everything to try to find yours. And some of the people were living in houses on the hill in front of there. They let the women and the children come into their houses because it was snowing that day. And the men stayed outside. And how did your mother feel? Oh, she felt very disgusted because she had a young baby and nowhere to stay uh, other than, you know, somebody let her stay in their house. And they would be afraid because they were afraid of the planter that they were living with on his plantation. Might put them out too. My mother was very disgusted because it was seven of us. She had seven children at that time and had a baby about five or six months old. And she was very unhappy, my mother. And we stayed out on the road for so many days and eventually they rented a lot at Park in Arkansas and moved us up there in tents, and we live there all the winter until spring. Now, you all, your whole family lived in this one tent. Can you tell uh, me yes. what that was like? Oh, it was awful. Can you say what was awful? We had, we had two beds in the tent, and the tallest chair, all the children had to sleep in one bed, and the bed, you had to sleep crossways. We all couldn't get in there straight up and and my daddy would put a bench on the side, and the taller children would have to sleep with their feet on the bench. <laughs> it was awful. We had a wood heater in there, born cold in it. And that's how my sister got born very bad. And thought once she wasn't going to walk anymore. Spilled hot ashes on her, cleaning out the heater. She was born bad. Can you tell me um, uh, the dynamite story? Yes. One day after we had moved in the tent column, didn't anybody want us to live there. The people around didn't want us there. I don't know what they thought about us. And one day, car came by, man got out and put a package in a paper bag on a table and got back in the car and sped away. Someone picked the bag up. It had a note on it saying, get out or get blown up. So what happened then? What happened then? We didn't have anywhere to go. We had to stay and take a chance until we got away. So if you can tell me about when you started in the field mm -hmm. and what that was like. Living on a plantation. When I was a child, I started working in the field at eight. And you didn't go to school until the season was over for the crop. They would have two months in July and August you could go to school. Then you had to stop and work until about the last of December or the first of January. And when I started working, it was cotton picking time. So the first thing I did, I started picking cotton. I had to pick 100 every day. That's what my daddy would set for me to do. And I'd pick, oh, about 119. <laughs> so. Did I talk that too soon? Hundred pounds of cotton I had to pick in one day. Okay. Okay, cat. Great. 